A couple of weeks ago, Blackmagic announced the newest version of DaVinci Resolve, which was going to introduce a whole bunch of new color grading tools, which looked really cool. One of which was a new Film Look Creator tool. Now, as someone who's been using film emulation and their color grading workflow for years now, I got really excited about this to test it out and see what all it could do and whether it was gonna be different from my workflow, whether it was going to be better than third-party plugins and all that good stuff. So after downloading DaVinci Resolve 19 and doing some tests and comparisons with my current workflow, a third-party plugin, and then the new Film Look Creator tool, I have some stuff to share. Now I understand that Resolve 19 is still in the beta testing phase, um, so obviously this stuff is all subject to change in the coming months, but I just wanted to go ahead and take a look at what's available right now. The Film Look Creator tool isn't really bringing anything new to DaVinci that it didn't already have. It's kind of just taking a bunch of the old stuff that they already had in their color grading suite and then squishing it into one node and calling it Film Look Creator, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is kind of weird because like the whole point of having a node tree is having different settings on each one so you can like tweak everything individually. But that doesn't mean it's a bad tool, it's just kind of odd. So when you look at the film creator, um, you move over to your panel here and you have this preset tab here. Um, you can see I've got it set to custom because I'm doing a color space override right now and I'll explain that here in a second. Um, so you can switch between um, these looks, I guess is what you'd say. And this is the closest thing it has to like film print emulation, which was really disappointing to see um, because obviously this, this isn't Kodak, this isn't Fujifilm, this isn't like <laughs> actual film prints, this is Instagram filters. Like this isn't really um, what I would call like a true film emulation. So as you can see, I have it set to custom. I did a color space override. Um, I shot this on my A7S III, so I've got my Sony conversion here. Um, output Y point is D55 because that is the LUT that I have enabled over here. So DaVinci has a bunch of LUTs built in. Um, scroll down to film looks, and then you can see all of these uh, prints here. They only have like three, four different options, I guess. Um, because all these are just different white balances of the same print, essentially. Um, so I've got Kodak, uh, I believe this is Vision, uh, I'm pretty sure. And then that's what I have my uh, output white point set to here, uh, as you guys can see. So is what they allow you to do basically is you don't have to do the color space override. You can just go with one of these preset looks here I did not like how any of those looked, um, so I kind of just uh, did the override and then put the LUT over it. And this is what I mean by saying that none of these tools are new, it's just consolidated. Is um, go over here to this clip. Um, so this is a clip where I color graded it uh, with no plugins, it's just DaVinci's built in um, film tools essentially. As you can see, I've got my primaries white balance, uh, exposure, contrast, all that good stuff. And then here I have a plain old color space transform node, converting it to Cineon film log. And then this is my LUT, right? Functionally, this is doing all of the same exact things as the film look creator. And yet they look a little bit different, don't they? I've, I've done my best to match them. Um, it's really difficult to match them. And if we look over here, this is a shot that I did outside with my wife. Um, again, this is Film Look Creator, and then this is uh, my normal workflow, doing film emulation in DaVinci. And you can see there is a little bit of a difference here. Um, and I don't get, because I'm using the same LUT, right? So I don't get where that difference is coming from. But I have to say, like, I just like the old way I did it better than this new Film Look Creator tool. I don't get what it's doing because I've looked at all these different settings. I've disabled most of them except for the bloom and halation. I have those going. Um, and same here, I have a halation node. Yeah, there's my halation node. So I'm replicating pretty much the same exact thing that you'd be getting in the Film Look Creator. 
Um, so I don't get what it's doing. I don't like that I can't control it really. And overall, I just like doing this workflow that I have going. Um, and this is what I've been using for the past two years, I think, that I've been in DaVinci. I love it. I've been using it for a long time. Uh, I think it looks great. And I think it looks better than the Film Look Creator. Um, but that's just my opinion. And so here I'm using Dehancer Pro. Um, I'm not super familiar with the Hanser. I've been using it for about a month now. They reached out and asked if I would like to make a video about their plugin. Um, and being that I had been using film emulation for a long time, I thought it might be cool to give it a try. Um, they're not paying me any money. All they're doing is giving me a free license and an affiliate link, which you guys can find down below if you have any interest in checking out the Hanser for yourself. Now, if we look over at Dehancer, you can see I have Kodak Vision 3 selected um, with the 50D uh, white balance or temperature, I guess it'd be. This is Dehancer, Film Look Creator, and then uh, Basic Film Emulation in DaVinci. Honestly, my favorite out of these three looks is just the native, plain old, film emulation that I've been doing in DaVinci for years out of all three of these, even compared to Dehancer. But I will say Dehancer has something really cool going for it. And that's if we go over here to film and click on this, look at all of these prints. Like look at all of these. They have all of these different prints to choose from. Just the fact that it gives you so much flexibility um, it's really, really cool. And you can change, again, just like with Film Look Creator, you can change your exposure, temperature, um, you've got your black point, white point, film grain, halation, bloom, um, this color head here. Um, this is where you can like change the actual like colors in different parts of the image, which is really cool. Just so much flexibility. I found the video from a guy named Topic Ruben. I'll be sure to include a link to it down below. And it was a fantastic video, super helpful. Um, got me up and running into Hanser in no time. This was shot during golden hour. So we have the Hanser, Film Look Creator, and then Standard. Again, I have to be honest, I just like the way that this last one looks. Just the standard color space transform. Uh, in DaVinci Resolve, no other fancy stuff. I think that this looks great. I'd say the Dehancer is my second favorite and I think that it looks really good. Now, as I said earlier in the video, I don't know what the future holds for the Film Look Creator tool. Hopefully DaVinci does some other stuff with it and maybe we get some film print options or something cool like that. But at the moment, it's just really unimpressive. Um, honestly, I would just stick to what I'm already, what I've already been doing in DaVinci, um, or I would use Dehancer. Another thing that Dehancer asked me to mention was their iPhone app. Um, basically, they have their own version of like Lightroom Mobile, and it has a bunch of film presets. It has some great controls, some great offerings, um, and it looks really good. And honestly, I love it. And if you want to check that out, I'll include a link to that down below as well. I don't know what the future holds for the Filmlet Creator tool. Um, I hope that it continues to get bigger and better and offer different options as time goes on. But in the meantime, Dehancer is the king of film emulation. And I really love the standard built-in color space transform film emulation in DaVinci outside of the Filmlet Creator. It's definitely a good option, especially if you're on more of a budget but still want to get that film look but it just doesn't offer nearly as many options as Dehancer does. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you all next time.